Hi folks and welcome back to part two of my Baker Tent build video. In this episode I'm going to sew all the panels together, I'm going to add a ground sheet, I'm going to make up the poles and I'm going to add the eyelets and tie out points to complete it. I've wanted a Baker Tent for as long as I can remember. Um, yes I could have gone out and bought one, there are companies out there that make them and uh, I'll put links to those companies um, in the description box below. But I like making stuff, I've got a sewing machine, so I really wanted to have a go at making my own version. There's one last job I need to take care of before I sew these panels together. I want to have a ground sheet in this tent like I have on my Polish Lavu. I want the ground sheet to be removable so that I can replace it if it gets damaged and it gives me the option as to whether or not I take it with me on a trip. I could save a bit of weight by just taking the canvas without the ground sheet. So to attach the ground sheet, I'm gonna use Velcro. I buy Velcro on the reel like this in 25 meter reels. And I'm gonna sew, sew on the, the soft side, not the, not the hook side, um, onto the canvas. This is the, the back panel of the tent, just for, just for reference. And that's gonna be four inches or 100 mil up from the, from the bottom of the tent so that my ground sheet forms has a kind of upstand so it forms a kind of you know bathtub style ground sheet So I've sewn the side panels onto the roof, which wasn't too bad because that was edge to edge. I'm now going to sew on the front panel. I've got a couple of marks on here where the front panel joins the roof. Um, these are two foot or 600 mil in from each end. And these are the points where I want the straps to be so that when I roll the front panel up, the door, I can fasten it. So I've got uh, a long piece of, uh, piece of strap that I made up from canvas and a shorter piece with the toggle on. I need to sew these in because they're gonna be trapped in by this, by this hem. Where the back panel meets the roof, um, I've used a straight running stitch and then I've reinforced it with a zigzag stitch which will help to stop the canvas from fraying. Um, 
when I offered this up to sew this on, for some reason my back panel has ended up shorter than where it's going to be sewn onto the side panel, if you see what I mean. Um, and I didn't have enough room. Normally I'd have 20 mil here so I could fold that over and hide that raw edge inside the seam. But I only ended up with about 10 mil, so um, I've had to do it this way. But that should be fine, that'll stop it fraying. It's on the inside as well, so it won't show on the outside. Right, this is the last seam, uh, or the last of the big seams anyway. Um, front panel onto the side panels. I've been dreading this one <laughs> um, because this is the most difficult one to do. This this creates a, a corner and I've got a stitch right next to the sleeve where the pole goes and I've also got um, a strap in there with a toggle on, a cord with a toggle on, which I've got to keep away from as I'm sewing and I have to stitch another cord in at the same place as I go, trapped in by this panel. So there's quite a lot to kind of remember. And uh, obviously now I've got everything on here, so this is a great big weight of canvas I'm having to work with. Um, yeah. Right, we are very nearly there with the sewing, I'm pleased to say. Um, the next thing to do is to attach the downstand to the edge of the porch area. Um, and that's just to shed any rain off so that it drips off the downstand and doesn't run underneath the uh, porch area of the tarp and then drip down. So I've drawn a line 10 millimeters in from the edge of the roof panel and I'm gonna lay the downstand over. So it's overlapping by that. 10 millimeters, that one centimeter, and I'm just gonna run a line of stitching along that will just tack it in place. Um, for now, it makes it a lot easier when I come to hem it if it's kind of already in place. I've also taken some measurements and made some marks on the roof panel because I've got some more of these loops to sew in and they'll be trapped in with the stitching just as before. And these are the, these are the loops that hold the side panels in place so that I can undo it, roll the side panel away if I don't want the side panel there, or I can attach it in um, bad weather.
In the corners and at all the tie out positions, I'm going to use these brass grommets. These are a super heavy duty grommet and they have these little spurs uh, on one part so they actually grip into the canvas as well as clamping it. Um, really, really good. I'll put a link to where I got these uh, in the description box below. I also bought the setting tool, um, which is a really, <laughs> a really heavy lump. Um, but yeah, you need this to, to be able to set that correctly. So before these go on, I need to make some holes. I've got a, a hole punch here and I'm just going to punch holes in the corners, making sure that there's enough room for the actual grommet. So I want to come slightly in from that corner. Well, that is a serious lump of canvas. For poles, I'm gonna use softwood. I was originally planning on using ash, but it just was gonna to be too expensive. Ash poles are expensive. Um, I went to my local builder's merchants and found these in the rack. They're uh, 35 mil diameter. So perfect for what I need. And uh, they weren't very expensive. I'm gonna make them so they come apart. And for that, I'm gonna use brass tubing. This is a, a recycled curtain pole and it just happens to be exactly the right size. The internal diameter of this tubing is the same as the external diameter on the wooden pole so it just is a just a slip fit which is perfect. I'm going to cut this into short lengths and I'm going to glue it onto the ends of one half of the pole and it'll act as a ferrule and then the other side will just push in so they can join together and it should be good and strong and it's brass so it'll look nice and it'll match the grommets. <laughs> Well, that is the tent done. The only thing that I still need to do is the ground sheet. It's been, <laughs> it's been a really hard project. It's been tough, purely because of the, the size of it really, you know? You need a lot of space to work, to spread out, to check your measurements, to, to cut. Um, and it's a lot of material to feed through such a small machine. So if you have access to an industrial machine, it will be a lot easier. Um, I ended up using 14 meters of the canvas I bought. So that's 14 meters at 1.8 meters wide um, was everything to, to make the tent. I used 18 reels of thread, <laughs> um, a hank of paracord for the uh, guy lines, my zip, my Velcro. I'll put links to everything uh, in the description box, everything that I used. Um, and the poles, like I said, they're just readily available from DIY stores and builders merchants. So that's no, that's no biggie there. It has been good fun. I've enjoyed doing it. You know, it's, it's very rewarding making your own gear. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to get huge amounts of satisfaction from using it. So that means it's time to get outside and put it up.
here we have it. Porch area. Undercover, so the idea is you can have your fire in this area here. Somewhere to sit out of the rain. And then sleeping compartment at the back. I found um, it worked better by just propping up the corners with sticks. I didn't seem to uh, be able to get enough tension to stop the back of the, um, the back wall basically sagging. Uh, that could probably be sorted out with longer guy lines. My guy lines are only about a metre long and I think looking at the angle they could have done with being longer. That's obviously the further I can peg them out over that way the the better that would be but a couple of sticks just under the corners there seems to work and do the trick nicely. There are the pole sleeves. The side walls of the porch area just toggle onto the roof so that um, if I want to take those off I can and it just rolls up and that's what those ties are there that you can tie it back. And the ties above the door there I just said that when the door is open, you can roll it up and tie it up out of the way. Plenty of room for sleeping in here. Two people could sleep in here comfortably. Possibly three at a pinch. Certainly enough for me and Maggie because that's that's who's going to be using it. Now heavy rain is uh, obviously a problem with any kind of tent that has a flat roof, a flat panel like this. Um, so the idea then is that you can lean one of these poles out and just retension it and you've created a slope and then any rainwater can just run off to this low point here and just drip off the end here rather than collecting and pooling in the middle here so that's all you have to do if uh, if the weather turns bad you can put it back up right again afterwards Well, I'm absolutely delighted with this. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, I've, I've wanted one of these for years and um, sort of undenied about buying one. But I enjoy making things and it seemed like a good fun project. I'm really looking forward to properly using it. I'm not gonna be sleeping in it tonight. I've literally just come out just to, just to put it up and, and try it out for size. And it's great, you know, I'm sitting in a big camp chair and there's plenty of room above my head. I've got room around me to hang things up and to put a couple of bits of furniture. I'd have my fire literally on the floor underneath this. This is all um, fire or flame flame resistant uh, canvas. So um, yeah, there's there's no issues there. It's not it's not like being in a nylon tent. So um, yeah, really good. I can hang my lantern up, and uh, it's really cosy. It's heavy. I haven't weighed it yet, but I'll um, I'll put the 
weight of it up here somewhere. Um, yeah, it's not something you're going to put in a back backpack. It wouldn't fit for a start. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a big thing. But for canoeing, ideal. If you haven't got too many portages, car camping, absolutely no problems, you know. Just, uh, yeah, stick it in the back of your car and off you go. Cost-wise, I think it's probably cost me about £250. Um, possibly a little bit more. But to buy one, you're looking at at least 500 So it is definitely cheaper if you've got the if you've got the means and the ability and you've got a sewing machine it's not too difficult to do it's just awkward time wise you're looking at about 20 hours to complete the project it took me longer but i was filming and there was obviously time involved in setting up the camera and all the rest of it i've got to put some drawings with measurements on for this project on my facebook page um, there's a link in the description box below the video so if you're interested or want to have a go at making one of these yourself that's where the measurements are. Yep, I am absolutely chuffed to bits. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.